Hello loyal fans, today I'm going to be talking about the concepts of using distributed version control systems. Now I, I believe the main problem people have when they start using tools like Git or Mercurial which are distributed version control systems is the concepts behind these systems. Like why is a distributed version control system better than a centralized one? I believe after having a good understanding of the concepts and the rationale behind these systems, you'll be able to use them a lot more easily and understand what exactly is going on and how you're actually working together with other developers. So let's look at the sort of the naive uh, solution to developers working together, which is a centralized repository solution where all developers check in their code to the same place or commit if you will and check out so let's just store everything in the same place that's the solution and it's a very very bad solution indeed we'll even look at the technical reasons why it's a bad solution so say you're the developer down here you want to check out some code in March so you do that. So you want to check out, there was some bug that you tracked down. It was happened sometime in March. Um, so you checked out your, your source code at that time. Now, then again, you want to check out your source code in um, February. Well, a lot of the files in February um, haven't really changed much since, since March. And yet you're going to have to check them all out over the network. And for a large program, pro, um, for a large project, this takes a lot of time. Now, it might not be something that's a problem in the future, but as of right now, this wastes time. Now let's look at some of the other problems with this approach. Now all, all these operations are over the network, so if you if you want to check out, if you're checking out code, it happens over the network. If you commit code, it happens over the network. If you create a branch and then you want to check out that branch it happens over the network and this is all these are all slow operations for a large project now if you've got all your stuff in the one place you could back it up be a bit of a hassle um, so if the but if the NSA were to attack it and you didn't have it backed up then everything would be gone and now if, if you don't know any better then you don't really realize that your workflow is being governed by the fact that you're storing everything in the same place. So it's very hard, for instance, to give a, a, just a single developer a change you make. You can do branching and um, in CVS and subversion, but it's just a hassle. You're going to have to check out that branch. It's going to be slow. It's just not designed for. It's not designed for being quick. Full stop. It's just simple crude solution so these version control systems like CVS and subversion are slow and clunky and hard to do anything other than to just commit code to the same spot for anything else they're painful to use now let's just look at an incremental improvement to these centralized repositories so let's give the developer their own repository. So if you didn't get it already, this cloud is a repository and this cloud is the developer's repository. Now, whatever changes happen here, the developer only needs to copy those changes from this repository to here. And so you've already reduced the amount of stuff you need to transfer over the network. So you're going to get, and because you're checking out from your local repository, you get faster checkouts because they're not happening over the network. Only the changes between the repositories are happening over the network. Now, this is already more secure because this developer can back up this repository with his repository and vice versa. There's also some ability to work offline, so we're no longer limited to committing everything to the one spot. I can commit stuff to, to here if I'm this developer and then um, do what's called a push when I push changes from this repository up to that repository at a later t time. So I can at least do some committing 
and if if you want to get stuff from this repository into your local repository then that's called a pull in um, that these are the terms used in uh, Git. So this is already quicker than CVS and SVN and we haven't changed the workflow really at this stage. It's exactly the same sort of thing happening and yet it's already quicker so hopefully already you can start seeing some of the um, flaws in CVS and um, SVN. So now let's let's think about what what are some of the possibilities if each developer has their own repository? Well, why do these repositories only need to interact with the main repository? Can't they interact with each other? And that's exactly what you do in Git. You can re interact with your other developers' repositories. You can have references to other developers' remote repositories. The team leader, for instance, can see everyone else's repository it is much more there's so much more flexibility in your workflow so let's take a look at one of the workflows you can implement easily in something like git or mercurial so say we've got two teams working on two different plugins for some software project what you can do is have the team leaders are the only ones that can uh, push changes into the main repository and the developers working under them can um, send in pull requests to these uh, developers so th uh, their team leaders so a pull request is a notion in github where you request um, that some of your changes in your repository um, get into somebody else's repository and so you can create these hierarchy workflows and the team leaders are aware of all the commits going into um, the main repository for their plugin because they all pass through them. Now that's just one example of one of the workflows possible in Git. There's infinitely many workflows. In reality, all these repositories could have references to one another. You'd, you've got infinitely many, infinite many possibilities. You do not need to work in any, ma any manner dictated by your version control system. So, thank you for watching. I believe now, if you understand some of the concepts that were, or hopefully all the concepts that were in the video, you won't have as much trouble using subversion and, oh sorry, not subversion, uh, Git and Mercule or other distributed version control systems and then you'll have more time to go on holiday because you'll be more productive and probably have more money too so you can buy a new car. So thank you for listening. In the next video I'll show you how to implement um, that hierarchy workflow that, that I showed in the video. So thank you.